Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and I'm running in my 79th Guinness Record election in Toronto Centre. And there was an all-candidates meeting at University of Toronto, held by the Poly Science Department at Carr Hall uh, last Saturday. I went to, and like the first meeting that I ever had at the University of Toronto back in 1981, during the Spadina election, this one got broken up because of me. Back then, the titles were Fight Ends Spadina All Candidates Meeting. And the story was they'd originally had a meeting slated for just the big three candidates. And the other three showed up. And I convinced the other two guys to take seats on the stage with me. And all of a sudden, the moderators got a problem. But instead of calling the cops, he opened the debate, they moved it to a bigger hall, and all six of us were there. Great! Now, the moderator, he's tricky. He's going to try and screw us anyway. So after the first question is answered by the first three major candidates, and the little communist goes up there to do his, he's turned away by the moderator. He says, sorry, only the big three get to answer. So I went up on to the moderator, and I said, hey, I'm answering that question too. And he said, no, you're not. And I went, Shh. and I took the mic. No, no wire. I'm answering it too. So I start to talk. And next thing you know, I've been pushed off the stage. Only three foot high stage, but still he pushed me off the stage. So I come back on stage. I still got the mic and I'm going, come on, let me speak. Give me the right to speak. And as I'm speaking, he comes up again behind me. And he grabs me. Now, this guy's not a trying not to hurt me as a history professor. And uh, so anyway, I just sort of let myself fall and extended my leg and tripped him and he went flying off the stage, his turn. Then he came back on stage, called off the meeting. Well, basically, um, Spadina Slugfest had it all by Slinger. Quick minute read. The all candidates meeting for the Spadina by election that landed up at Convocation Hall at University of Toronto the other night was a schmazzle. But it was a spectacular schmazzle. It was the rootinest, tootinest, rip roaringest, rudest, most rambunctious election meeting held in these parts in ages. It was the meeting against which all other all candidates meetings will have to be measured. It was noisy, hot, edgy, and half the time it was drowned out by hecklers. It was vulgar, angry, funny, and obscene. And it ended in a brawl. What could be finer than that? I've always maintained that politics is the best spectator sport in the country. If that meeting had been a hockey game, there would have been editorials today demanding that something be done about the violence. The sight of a professor of history in this corner, who was the moderator of the meeting, grappling with a proponent of one of history's greatest exercises in Holcomb, the independent social credit candidate, and one of them flinging one another bodily, literally bodily, off the platform, and otherwise carrying on like Haystack Calhoun and Killer Kowalski was a sight that will forever represent to me a brilliant paradigm of the free interplay of ideas. And it was all over the moderator deciding not to let the little minor candidates answer a question too, but that meeting was called off. Now, here we are, 32 years later, another meeting at the U of T. Here's what happened. Okay, so I got to the meeting about a half an hour beforehand. It started at 3, I got there at 2.30. And I saw the setup. They had spots, and they were going to have the four major candidates debate by themselves for the first section of the show. He explained to me. Then they were going to let the minor candidates, the other six of us, have another part of the show. And he wasn't quite specific about who was going to get the third part of the show. And I said that was unacceptable. But he said, well, that's too bad. You're going to have to live with it. And I couldn't very well, he said, security, I'll have you removed. And he had security there. I couldn't very well be removed before the show started. And I wanted my chance to speak. So I had no choice. I, uh, you know, protested, walked up and down the aisles, telling people how unfair it was, you know, for the 20 minutes before, you know, and complaining about they should vote to let everybody speak and shouldn't the major candidates be supporting this? 
And then he came over and he told me he didn't want me talking to the voters and he wanted me to sit down. And I told him, screw you, you're not going to stop me from talking to the voters and you're not going to make me sit down. And I kept going. So anyway, I had to sit during the show though when they had the major candidates. I wasn't going to make a disruption and miss my chance to, to speak at least. I get to pen the kid during my speech. And then Kevin Clark, bam, during the major candidate address decided to interrupt the show. Here's that part. So here we go. Canadian politician Kevin Clark disorderly at debate. This is the first part when the other major candidates were speaking. We do nothing to clamp down on these obvious sources of revenue. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Now, there will be a democratic debate. Whether you like it or not, I ran to Kitchener. I ran for Senator. shouldn't be touching him. Now when I do this kind of stuff, I whine. Come on, give me a fair chance. Don't be undemocratic comes out a little different, doesn't it? We have Canadian Charter of Rights and the people have a democratic right to hear from all candidates equally. I spent $1,000 me to represent you. Yeah. Don't tell me you are going to let the Liberals, Conservatives, and new Democrats. And Greens. Fix it. I am liberal. Right. I was going to run for the conservative. Uh, I am all three in one. Please, we'll gentlemen, please, ladies, have a break. So that's the first break. Okay, and when that was over, we came back and now the major candidates have finished their portion and it's time for the minor candidates. So I now go onto the stage and I sit down there like with the other candidates. Now I didn't want to sit there originally because I didn't want to look like a lump on a log as a backdrop for these guys. So, and uh, so the seat was empty there Then I went up after. So over comes Polly side student to tell me since you did not Obey, he didn't say obey, since you did not accept our invitation to come and sit on stage with the others, you cannot now participate in the rest of the debate. Well, a couple of other guys come in late and they went and sat on stage, a couple of other candidates. They weren't there at the start, didn't have a chance to refuse and go sit in the audience like I did. And so I said to the kid, yeah, you and what army is going to move Jiu-Jitsu John out of this chair? Well, then he realized he had a problem. So he called off the meeting again, suspended the meeting while he's going out to get security to have me removed again. So the usual story, I'm going to be heckling the people for the next five, 10 minutes as being an undemocratic commies, old oh, insult from the past. It ain't true anymore. They're more liberal and democratic over there than we are now. And, uh, and then have, Police take me away, tick, 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 turmel taken away from another debate, protesting exclusion. 
And then, as I'm starting to put up my fight about being excluded, Kevin Clark decides he needs to resolve the John Turmel problem for me. understand why the security guys who were coming in to get me didn't come to me. <laughs> the moderator <laughs> is meaning exploded in his face.
That's right, John Termell said he wasn't leaving. That's right, it's the guy in the white hat causing all the trouble. That's right, John Termell said he's not leaving. That's why he's making all the noise. Sure, John Termell's a white man and they went to him, but it wasn't because he was black, was it? Having fun! Little poly size student decided he was gonna push me around. Hey! Don't sick him on me! Team here. John Tanner said he is not leaving. Now you're coming to the cover guy to leave. Is that not what happened? Right. John Turmel's not leaving. John Turmel's the problem. Why are they chasing me? Maybe if you weren't making so much noise. Enjoy the moderator's busted up meeting. All he had to do was open it up. Want to hear from John Turmel. Okay, so unfortunately we won't be able to continue with the debates. Um, I apologize. Uh, do you, feel you better you apologize. Polly size screw up. Next one. Now, outside. Why would they arrest you inside? Why would they arrest you outside? Is this, is this Canadian? Do you know? Do you know? 
that's the debate. And you ran down. Call, 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 he lost the debate. And you ran him down outside. I know, eh? Right? Going down on the ground. Right. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I lost the debate. This is outside. That's right. This is how bad the liberals. Oh, no. I, no, I will not move without my health care worker. I was in Ajax yesterday. I waited two and a half years for my MRI. My doctor told me not to go through any stress. You can kill me if you like. I'm going home. We left your place. You people, it's up to you. Am I inside here? Why are they arresting Am I him outside? That debate. Am I not outside? It doesn't matter. You told me to leave, and I left. Look where I'm at. It doesn't matter. I am outside on my way home. I will not listen to anything. After I got outside, after I left, no, this is the Toronto Police decision. I am outside. Right. Only the Toronto Police can put your hands on me legally. Or, 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 or you can run someone down. Look what happened to that kid. That security guard ran down Tayshawn Martin and killed him. I know that. Only the police. Only this person is not an indictable offense. Exactly. You gotta wait for the car. You have to trust me. Only the I've been arrested a lot of times. The Toronto police. The most only the Toronto police. The guy who wrote for trust you. You have to stop the car. I would have done that. I want to see He's got him there. He should have let him go home. Jeez, what a dumb moderator, eh? Still pushed to have the guy busted. I wonder what they're going to charge him with. Breach of the peace outside? He wasn't breaching the peace outside. So there you have it. John Turmel was the problem, and Kevin Clark resolved it by going and getting himself arrested. Whereas I would have been escorted outside, told not to go back in, and gone home. Made my protest. So I wonder what's going to happen with his trial. Signing off, John the Engineer Turmel. Another debate tomorrow, tonight in Toronto at Jarvis Collegiate, hosted by John Tory. Now, John Tory's funny because he's a Bay Street baby, you know, big money bucks, and uh, ran in a by-election to try. He was a leader of the Ontario Tories and ran in a by-election. And at one of the debates, I was there, and I asked him to support my right to participate in the debates, and he didn't. And as I got taken out by the cops, I called him a chicken and cackled at him. And I'm thinking to myself that when he lost that election by one or two percent, what would have happened if he'd been the hero of democracy, like Bob Mitchell or Peter Worthington, who'd spoken up to the moderators and said, let him stay, and they backed down? What happened if John Tory had been a good Tory, like Bob and Peter, and spoken up for me? Maybe those extra 1% of the Tories would have gone out and voted for him, and he wouldn't have lost. Well, now's John Tory's chance to screw me tonight, the moderator of the undemocratic debate coming up that I'm going to go to, try and get my time, see if he can manage to keep it undemocratic. Bay Street, baby.